Hi everyone, I'm Sloan from SloanBella.com and I'm back with another channeled celebrity video. This one is a much requested video on the late comedian, actor, and all around nice guy, according to everybody that ever knew him, Robin Williams. And I wanted to start saying he was a Cancer with a Pisces moon and a Scorpio rising. That is incredibly watered out to begin with. In other words, that is a water, water, water person who's emotionally fluid like the ocean and the tides. Strong and powerful and resilient and at the same time flowing every which way. But I wanted to tap in right away to Robin Williams' energy and that was a hard one for me to do. I remember the day he died, obviously, as a lot of people do, it was announced. And I tapped into it at that point, but I kind of threw it out of my head. It's not something I wanted to focus on, but the very first thing that I felt when I picked up around his energy is there was great, great, great regret and great sadness from early on in his life. This is something to do between him and his mother and the way that he felt in connecting with his mother. His primary focus was on getting her attention, okay? Which is probably how he ended up a comedian and an actor was to get his mother's attention. Now, what he is saying to me, and this is very interesting, the way that he passed away and the disease that they said he had, which was something dementia, Louis something dementia, I can't remember it, but you guys can look it up, I'm sure. That wasn't actually the case. That's what they wanted you to know. And I know that that sounds conspiratorial and I know that the word conspiracy makes everybody sound like a nut, but I'm really getting this from the essence of who he was. He's showing me early on in his life and there was something about when he was a child and the family he was born into and the way that people viewed him that made him feel like a foreigner in his body. He is telling me that this life is a lifetime in tandem with another life, okay? So he was born into this life obviously born into this life from the most recent past life of which he had behaved the same way. I think he's trying to tell me that in this life he was supposed to choose a different direction, but he hadn't completed the direction in that life. It was really weird because the both lives, the one that we know him as Robin Williams and the one most prior, prior recent, he, the same outcome happened. So the same things were said, the same actions were taken. It was like a repeat for him and it wasn't supposed to be. Now, when he came into his physical body in this life, I'm literally seeing him look around like I don't even know who I am. So I really feel like the most recent past life that he was thrown out of his body in that life and chose to incarnate in right away to complete he may have accidentally passed away in the in the most recent past life before he became Robin Williams and then chose to incarnate in in this life to get it over with quick. In other words, oh shit, I'm dead. I need to jump right back in because I'm looking at him at his birth. He's kind of showing me this. Like I'm looking at him. I'm like, well, who am I? So he had very strong precognitive past life memories all through his childhood and felt very alien and very foreign in his physical body. Okay. That also sounds a little bit like he might've been a woman and then switched to a man, something like that, because the way that he's looking at himself is like, who is this? Could have been a different skin color, but I kind of get it like a gender switch actually, or, or like a really different kind of physical body in this life than he had last time. It's just this this shock of like, who am I and what have I done? Um, why am I here? And then he always had the undercurrent of this knowledge. When he was very young, I see him trying to get his mother's attention. There was some kind of a rift between the two of them because he's trying like hell to get her attention and to focus on her and to get, to get the respect of her and everything was for his mother. He wanted his mother's attention. And that goes to his Scorpio rising, okay? Not his cancer son. Because I know they say cancers love their mommies, whatever. It's his Scorpio rising I'm seeing here. It's that connection and that energy. And I feel like his family really didn't understand who he was. The first wife in his life absolutely understood who he was. And he's basically sending an apology to her because she tried to stop him from going down the wrong path. I really feel like that has to do with drugs. Um, I feel like she tried to stop him, but I also feel on a spiritual level, she tried to stop him from doing something that she knew he would regret on a soul level. So I see it that way, his behavior, what he was allowing in his life, 
what he was continuing to do. He's saying he was like a galloping horse. He's like galloping through life. He's like, oh my God, I'm galloping through life. I'm successful. People like me. I actually remember Mork and Mindy when he first showed up on camera. Well, at least from my recollection. And I thought he was brilliant. He was like an alien. And I thought, oh my God, this is such a great concept. So interesting that he personally, as a human being, felt like an alien in his body or alien to his body. The other thing that I see, and I see this, I go from the first wife, um, and I don't even know how many wives there were. If there was one, two, three, or, you know, who knows. But it's the first wife I'm speaking of. He has an apology for her. There's tremendous apology. He holds her hand like this in my head, and he just holds her hand, the worry and the concern for her, and from her to him, and he acknowledges that, okay? And he paid no attention whatsoever. He knew better. Now, what he is telling me, what he is telling me from his death, and no matter what anybody thinks, I understand what they said in the media. I understand the narrative. You should know by now that whatever is said publicly in order to socially agendize us to think a certain way may or may not be true. We have to actually feel it. And as a psychic, that's what I'm doing. I don't care what's reported. I don't care what the police say. I don't care what anybody says. I know what I feel. So as an intuitive, I go with what I feel. Because I do get comments about that, like, oh, well, it was said this and it was said that. I really don't care. I'm going to say what I feel. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But this is what I feel. And that's what this channel is about. Intuitively moving through the world as a psychic medium. And so I get impressions. That's the way it works. But with Robin Williams, what I wanted to say is at the point of his passing, what I am seeing and what I did see on the day he passed is a huge, gigantic black spider around him. Okay. Now, I'm seeing somebody actually send this spider to him from the astral level, from outside of the human physical level, outside of the human boundaries, outside of the context of, uh, you know, where we live right now. Like, this is touchable, the wall's touchable, we're touchable, outside of the context of this. And I'm seeing somebody send this spider, and I'm seeing a web built around him so that he could not energetically choose to see things differently or to move differently. Somebody sent this to him. This is a black magic ritual, and I'm seeing it. I'm familiar with it only because I am a psychic medium, and in that world, we run into all kinds of different ways of doing psychic business, whether it be, you know, all the other, just many different ways. If you, if you're in this industry, you understand that there are many things. It's not just all airy fairy good. Okay. And in fact, if someone tells you that they're not really talking about, there's always a balance. There's always a yin and a yang to everything. But with Robin Williams, somebody literally threw a huge giant black spider at him that encompassed him with an energetic web. Now a web is sticky. Remember when you go in the garage or outside or by your barbecue, it's always by the barbecue. There's like a spider web and it's got something wrapped up really tightly, mummified almost. And you're thinking, God, should I free that thing? Is that thing dead? What is that? For several years, and in fact, going back 16 years before he passed, I don't know what happened in his life at that point, but going back 16 years before he passed, he started to be stuck in this energy, started to be bound, started to be stuck. It was that kind of a thing. So for him, it was this, this, this being unable to direct his life the way that he wanted to, okay? I also feel really strongly that he started to put up a fight with people around him, okay? I don't think he was crazy at all. I don't think he had the dementia the way that they describe it. I think that that's the way they analyzed it. What I'm seeing with him actually is that the way that he took care of his physical body, what he ingested, what he ate, um, what he partook in, this is what caused that problem, which has very similar symptoms to what they described that he had. I don't feel like he committed suicide the way that they're saying. I feel like they shut the body down energetically with this spider on the other side. Not even joking, I see him webbed. I see him stuck energetically. So there was nothing else that he could do to save himself is how I feel. Um, I am feeling that for the last four years before he passed, he was basically shut up and gagged. I am feeling that there was... Um, 
financials and paperwork and projects that were signed over to other people and he was told to do so. And I feel like he was fighting them. I feel like he was fighting everyone around him, including this new wife. Now they may articulate that as being part of his disease. He's depressed, he's this, he's that. What he's telling me, which is what I hear from a lot of them, is that when you're talking about suicide and depression, he's kind of chuckling right now because he's saying, okay, this in interesting, he's saying that very few people are committing suicide the way that it's pre presented in modern terms. In other words, depression, he's basically saying depression doesn't exist. Now, I know it does exist. I myself have been depressed, saddened, but what he's showing me is whatever was webbing him, okay, so like a sticky, sticky, like a web, okay, like we described the web, the spider outside, totally caught up like a mummy. What he's saying is that energy, that, that, that stickening and dampening of the energy over a person's physical human body will, will squash their energy and be reflected as a type of depression. But he's basically saying that when you hear the word suicide, very few people are going out and saying, I'm gonna fucking kill myself, fuck you, and doing it. That's not what's happening. He's showing me this. He is telling me, and he's the first one that's told me this. I mean, some of the people I, I communicate with or communicate around their energy, I do feel like it's satanic ritual. It's all different kinds of things. But he's literally saying this was a black magic assault where they sent something in the astral like a big black spider. It looks like a big furry black spider, like this big, okay, um, like that, and webbed him is what he's saying. I've never actually heard that. I'm seeing it. Now, they do send things astrally, beings, entities, all kinds of things. And he's showing me that when he was approximately 25, 26, he let something in his body. He's also telling me that sometimes when you pray to certain things, let's say you're whatever religion you are, and you're praying to something and you're saying, I want the Holy Spirit in me, or I want this spirit in me, or I want Saint whoever in me, or I would like the tree frog gods in me, whatever, okay, put name on there. You don't really know what's going in you. And he said it was too late for him because he misunderstood. He's also showing me that he, on a certain level, had two very distinct, different personalities, very distinctly different, was not born that way. The drugs opened him up. He's showing me the drugs. He's showing me. Now, I know he had a cocaine problem because I actually remember that back in the day, but he's showing me other things. He's sparking something up here and it's not a joint. Um, okay, so crack, we'll just call it crack because I think it's back in the days of cocaine. And he's showing me his eyes and he's showing me literally that when he did this, he shot right out of his body. So he's going right out of his body. And he said, when you do that, you leave room for something to come right into you. So he, as he left, something came in and then there were two of them in there and it was always a fight to be him. So he's saying it was always a fight for me to be me. I could never just be me. I could never just be seen. I could never just do this. Um, he's completely animated right now. I want to run around the room like this, <laughs> screaming. I mean, my energy is just like hopped up with him. He's showing me the two different people inside of him. He's also taking a deep breath because when he looks around where he is right now and understands where he is, and by the way, this man has elevated. He's not stuck astrally, but he's not where he wants to be. He's showing me that he's confused by what's going on in his family at the moment. Again, I go right back to that first wife. I hold her hand. I don't, he does. I hold her hand for him or through him is what he's showing me. And I'm sorry to her because she tried to stop this from happening. She saw the both personalities. She saw this happening. He said he was very hidden in a lot of ways. And I'm gonna tell you something. A lot of people think this man was a genius and he's shaking his head. I was no genius, I took from you, I watched you. What he's saying to me is he was a really great mimic and that is a skill as well, but that's what he's saying. He's saying, I was a good mimic, this is what I did. So not only is he not able to be himself, he is mimicking other people. Um, what I feel like, he's not showing me, okay, this is what he's showing me on the day he died. On the day he died, he laid down in his room and his room was kind of light and airy. It wasn't like dark walls. It wasn't anything like this. I can see the bed here. So it's like the headboard is here. I can see the bed. I can see him lying down on the bed. His hands are here and he's just lying down on the bed. He's taking a rest and suddenly he's dead. 
That's what I'm seeing. So he's not quite sure how he went from point A to point B, but he was taking a rest and then he was dead. So it's as if he was on autopilot. It's as if he was on... Okay, hey, wait a second here. He is also showing me that he went to some sort of, okay, native ceremony, native something to try to clear this out of his head, native something, shaman, native something. It might be native in this country. It might be native in Africa, something. There's a connection this way with him. So he's showing me these people and they're dancing around him. I'm getting dizzy because there's people around him and he lay down and when he woke up, he wasn't him anymore, but he never was him is what he's saying. I could never be me. I don't know what this means exactly because I'm like, ugh, all over. I'm speaking like an Italian with my hands. That's his energy around me. But he's basically showing me that he was bound in the astral level. This is a, a black magic ritual or spell actually focused on him to bind him going back 16 years. I don't know who he was with or who he signed a contract with 16 years earlier, but this is what I'm seeing. So there was some kind of compromise made on a soul level with his energy going back about 16 years. And I'm not sure what it is, but I definitely see that. And I feel like that's why he ended up dead. I also feel that whatever was wrong with his brain that they want to call dementia had something to do with what he ingested in his life. What did he eat? What did he smoke? What did he put in his body? It had to do with that. It isn't what they're saying, but it does mimic those signs. So no one's lying about that. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying to you that whatever it is he did, he's not really sure how he ended up there. And so right for now, I'm going to do another video on Robin Williams. And once again, my name is Sloan from SloanBella.com.